Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another exciting YouTube tutorial with me, Rumi Fauzi. In this video, I'm going to continue explaining the third person controller series here. And in this video, we are going to create a attack mechanics where we can swing the sword and we can uh, trigger a combo, a three hit combo. So this is what we are going to create. And here I can press the mouse click to trigger the attack. If we wait, while before we continue to attacking it will reset to the first attack but if we press this rapidly it will create a combo and we will also create this uh, nice trail effect for the attack system let's start work on it but before we jump into the tutorials if you want to learn how to create a game from scratch to a complete game check out my online unity courses i've published a couple of courses covering best practices in game development with topics ranging from programming to visual tuning, desktop to a mobile platform, object-oriented programming, and many other useful tips. With the price of a takeaway, you'll get lifetime access to the course. Link in the description below. So first, we need to set up the animator to create an attack animation. So now we can go to the animator folder and we can select the the third person controller and I'm going to double click this animator so it's going to be open in the animator and here under the base layer make sure we are on the base layer not on the upper body layer I'm going to create a new state machine so I'm going to create a new sub state machine here and we can call this attack state and here inside the state machine let's create three different states so I'm going to create a first one and this is going to be the first attack and let's pick the male attack one and this animation is provided by the cartoon heroes asset so if you use this same asset you will have this animation and then we need to also create the other attack so I'm going to duplicate this and of course rename this to the second attack and I'm going to change this to also the male attack 2 and duplicate this one more time and this would be the attack number 3 and also change the motion to attack male attack 3 and now let's create the transition but before that we need to add the parameters so I'm going to add a boolean parameters for triggering the attack and we can call this attack and I'm going to also create an integer parameters and I'm going to call this attack num number and basically we need these two parameters to trigger an attack so for example from any state I'm going to make a transition to the first attack and in order to transition to this attack we need to add two condition the first one would be the attack value to be true and the second one we want to make sure that the attack num is set to equal one and we need to also modify the transition duration I'm going to make sure the duration is 0.1 second so it's not very long otherwise it will create latency between the controlling and the animation and it won't create good gameplay feel and we want to also disable the can transition to self and then we want to create a transition from attack 1 to the second attack and from the second attack to the third attack and here for the attack 1 to the attack 2 we want to add a condition where the attack are true and the attack number are equal to 2 okay and for the exit time I'm going to set this to 0.6 instead and for the duration I'm going to set this to 0.1 and here we can see in the animation preview right now if we pray the first animation there is a jittering effect like so so here as you can see we are saddling and then it starts to move again so I'm going to add an offset for the second animation here and we can move the transition offset here I'm going to set this to around 0.2 and I've test this value here and now if we scrub this it's swing to the back and then goes back to the front so there are no jittering motions anymore so it's it looks like a single swoop uh, of motion okay 
So now we have set up this transition. Let's go to the other transition here and let's set the exit time to 0 0.6 and the transition duration to 0 0.1. And for the condition, we want to also add the attack if attack boolean is true and if the attack number is equal and this time it will be 3 and we want to also set the offset here because as you can see uh, here if I scrub this there is a uh, repetition or a repeat motion so let's make this smooth and I've also test this out so I'm going to set this to 0 0.2 and now if I scrub this, it will be a one soup of motion as you can see. And make sure the has exit time is enabled. So we want to make sure that at least we already play 60% of the first animation and then when the player receive another input, then we want to go to the next attack. And this will create a, a combo style of uh, control. And then we want to also create a transition from attack to the up base layer here. So let's just create transition and then go to this state here and we want to pick the state and make sure we go to the idle move. And same goes with this one. We want to go to this here, pick the state and pick idle move. And from this transition, select the state and select idle move. And here uh, we want to make sure has exit time is enabled and we want to set the exit time to 0 0.8 and as always the transition duration to 0 0.1 and same goes to the other exit transition okay so now we are pretty much done with the animation now let's set up the hit effects or the swoosh effect so if we expand the player here i'm going to expand the male c object here i'm going to select the sword object on the screen and you see it will expand the hierarchy and for this sword object, I'm going to add a new effects and I'm going to add a particle system. And now let's set up the particle system. First, I'm going to set the start speed to zero so it will stay still. And I'm going to set the start size to around 0.1. So it's small. And now we need to change a couple of properties. Here, if we scroll down, I'm going to open the shape panel and I'm going to change the shape to a edge and I'm going to align the edge to our sword here so if we go to the side view here uh, let's just move the particle and then I'm going to rotate this using the rotate option under the shape so we can rotate the edge emitter and here I'm going to use this gizmo editing mode and I'm going to move the end vertex here so it's shorter and let's just uh, reposition the edge here okay so now uh, I'm going to disable this gizmo here and let's just reposition the edge so it fits the sword using the transform and I'm going to rotate this a bit on the x-axis here on the red circle so it's really aligned with the sword and now we have the particle system aligned with the sword i'm going to rotate this a bit on the y-axis on the green circle here like so and i'm going to move this slightly upwards okay so i think this looks good and the next thing that we want to create is we want to create the material for the particle so I'm going to go to the materials folder and I'm going to create a new material and I'm going to call this shoes FX. And for the material, I'm going to pick the particles and pick the standard unlit material. And for the rendering mode, I'm going to set this to additive. And for the color mode, I'm going to lift this to multiply. And let's just pick the default particle texture the blurry circle this one here so let's just pick this one and i'm going to change its color to around a bluish color like so and now i'm going to enable the emission here and change its color to also a bluish color and i'm going to set the intensity to around 2.5 so it's bright 
and this will affect if we use a post processing with bloom later uh, this will close the trails so now we have this uh, material setup let's pick the particle system and if we scroll down under the render tab here we can expand this and we can drag the shoes effect material here as the material and now let's set up the particle more here i'm going to enable the trails and for the trails we need to also set the trails material using this shoes effect material and let's expand the trails panel and i'm going to set the lifetime to around 0 0.3 should be enough and for the minimum vertex distance we want to make this a smaller so i'm going to set this to 0 0.05 and then uh, we want to set the the width over the trail to using curve and we want to set the end curve here to zero so we have a sharp uh, tapered uh, trail when we swing the sword later okay so the other thing that we want to set up is i think this should be okay but we need to set up the emission so i'm going to change the emission to around uh, 25 and for the duration we just we can just set this to one and we want to also set the pre-warm options to be enabled so once we start the uh, sword swinging it will have the particle amount uh, filled quickly and for the lifetime we want to set this to a random between two constants and i'm going to set this to 0 0.3 and up to 0 0.9 and for the start size we can also use a random value so let's just select random between two constants and we can set the other one to 0 0.07 so we have a random uh, scale for the particle and now if we select the player here the male C game object if we open the animation panel we can just pick the first attack and we can try to play to see the particle Okay, as you can see, we don't have the trail here because we need to set the trail to world the transform. So we can just go to the particle system again. And if we expand the trails, we can set the world space options to be enabled. And now if we play the animation, you see that we have a very nice trail here. If we go to the game view, you see that we have a very nice trail. And we can also increase the minimum vertex distance so it will have more definition it's it, it can have more vertex and it will be more rounded so now we have set up this uh, let's just stop the play and stop the preview here and with the particle system here we want to set one last thing here under the main panel here we want to disable the play on awake so we can disable this and it won't play the particle on awake okay let's save the scene and now we have set up the particle let's create the fsm Now let's start work on the FSM to trigger the attack animation. So look, first let's select the player game object and let's open the playmaker window here. And let's create a new FSM for defining the attacks. So I'm going to click this add FSM to player and under the FSM, let's rename this to attack. Okay, so now we have this FSM set up. Now let's create the first state. So for the first state, we want to add a get button down here and we want to use the fire one and this will be the left click on the mouse and also the left control on the keyboard and then we want to create a new event to trigger the attack so i'm going to call the event attack and i'm going to add the attack transition to this first state here so we can rename this state to wait for attack input and then we can send the event attack to this transition here Another thing that we want to set up is we want to set up the animator parameter values on the child object here on this state. So we can use the set animator boolean and then we can use the set animator integer also. So I'm going to add this and for the owner, uh, we want to create a variable to hold the child object. So I'm going to create a new game object variable and I'm going to rename this child animator and I'm going to drag the male C game object as the value to this variable that we've just created and under the state here I'm going to change the game object to specify game object and then use a 
variable that we've just created which is the child animator and for the integer I'm going to access the attack num integer that we've just created and here I want to set the integer value to 0 and for the boolean I'm going to also pick the child animator variable and for the parameter we want to set the attack boolean to false okay so now we've set up this state here I'm going to create a new state by holding control and then drag to this empty area here and it will automatically create a new state and I'm going to rename this state to attack1 and here we can just copy this action all of this action here because we need all of this action I'm going to press ctrl C and then paste it here by pressing ctrl V and for the integer I want to set this to 1 and for the boolean we want to set this to true okay and we need this get button down action again to progress to the second attack but we will also need to add a wait action so I'm going to add a wait action and if the user stays too long in this state without pressing the attack again then we want to go back to the first state it will cancel out the combo uh, time so for the time I'm going to create a new variable type of float and I'm going to call this combo window and I'm going to set its value to 0.4 and you can adjust this value depending on the uh, feel that you want but from my testing 0.4 seconds it's quite enough to trigger the combo so I'm going to change the time here to use variable and pick the combo window and for the finish event I'm going to add a finish transition so basically we need to create the attack transition and we need to create a finish transition and if the wait times out then we want to go to the finish transition here and finish will go back to the first state and for the attack we want to duplicate this state so I'm going to press ctrl C and then ctrl V to paste it and we will have the second attack and we can connect the attack transition to the second attack and here on the second attack uh, we want to change the set animator integer value to 2 and for the boolean we want to set this also to true and we want to connect the finish back to the first state and for the attack we want to connect to a new state here and some of you may ask why don't we just copy this and uh, go to the third attack this is because uh, we want to add a time between when we press the attack on the second state and we want to add a delay before we go to the next state and this is to prevent skipping the second attack because when we press this uh, when we press this button down here it will go to the first attack and it will set the integer value to 1 and at the same time in this uh, state we will trigger the first attack animation and if we press attack again it will alter the uh, integer value to 2 and this won't play the second attack yet because as you can see here in the animator the transition requires an exit time so it will wait at least for the first attack animations until to this second here to this normalize or 60% of the duration of the animations has been played then it will go to the second attack and basically from the first attack to the second attack we don't need a wait state so we can just go uh, to the second attack and once the first attack animations already reach 60% of this, its duration it will play the second attack animation but if we press it too quickly without adding a wait state up to the third state then probably the integer value will be set to 3 on the third state and this will skip the second attack and we will stuck on the first animation and we cannot proceed to the second and the third animation and then it will go back to the idle so we don't want that and that's why on the second attack we want to go to a new state first and then we want to add a wait action here and basically we want to set the time to around half second 0.5 and we can add a finish transition and let's add the transition so we can trigger the finish event here and I'm going to copy the second attack here and paste it as the third attack and 
for the third attack we don't need this attack uh, transition anymore so we can just delete the transition and we don't need this get button down action anymore and here we want to set the integer value of the attack number to 3 and this is basically will allow us to rapidly click the button or press the fire one three times and it will play the first attack animation and then play the second attack animation and if we press the fire one for the third time it will go to the state here and it will wait a while before triggering the third attack animation okay so this is to make sure that we will be able to play all of three of the attack animation so here under the finish transition we want to connect this to the third attack and for the third attack we want to connect the finish transition back to the first state here and then here if we go back to the first state then it will set the boolean attack back to false and this is also useful when we are canceling the combo so if we if we go finish here and it will reset all of the animator parameters that are needed for this attack animation here so now uh, we have set this here another thing that i want to set up is i want to disable the movement while we are attacking so here on the first attack i'm going to add an enable fsm and then uh, we want to use the owner and for the fsm name i'm going to select movement here and i'm going to disable it so i'm going to uncheck the enable option and also disable the reset on exit option so basically while we are attacking we won't be able to move but here if we go back to the first state then we want to re-enable this so we can just check the enable option and we don't need to add this enable fsm on the second attack because when we disable it on the first attack it will automatically be disabled on this attack here because uh, we don't have the reset on exit options enabled and we want to also add a slight velocity when we are attacking so we will have a forward motion a bit uh, like the player are advancing through the enemy so we can add a set velocity action and i'm going to put this set velocity actions on top of the stack here and i'm going to set the value of the z value to a value here so i'm going to disable use variable and set the z value to 3 and for the space i'm going to set this to self and don't check the every frame we want to give a boost of velocity only one frame and we can copy this set velocity action and paste it on the second attack and put this above here and also paste it here and move this above the set animator integer okay so now we have set up this one thing that we need to set up is to trigger the particle animation and if you remember from the previous chapter here if we select the let's select the sword game object here ah i've select the particle system i'm going to rename the particle system here so let's just rename this to shoes effects and if you remember we have disabled the play on awake so by default the particle won't be played on start and if we don't trigger it we cannot see the particle at all so if we select the player game object we can go to the first attack state i'm going to minimize all of the action here and i'm going to drag the shoes effects to this slot here and release it and we can pick the particle system but instead of using the get or set property i want to call a method so we want to invoke the play method of the particle so let's just select this call method and then we can search for void play and this will play the particle so basically when we enter the attack state the particle will get played and gets enabled and we can see the trail but we need to also disable it once we finish attacking so i'm going to copy this call method action and paste it on the first state here and instead of calling the play method i'm going to select the stop method here and now we can save the scene and let's minimize the player and now let's give it a try here and there you go as we can see if i press attack one time and then i leave for a while i leave the input for a while you see we start from the first one but if i press rapidly three times the mouse click 
and you can see we are playing the combo and if I only press two times it will play there is an issue because uh, the combo here is too fast compared to the exit time of the the first attack to the second attack here and this caused an issue here because when we go to the first uh, to the second attack we are still playing the first attack animation and it took longer to transition compared to go to back to the finish state here so while this are playing and then we go back to the uh, the first state here the integer sets to zero and we never played the second attack animation so in order to prevent this uh, we can go to the variable uh, window here and increase the combo window so i'm going to make this slightly bigger than our duration here uh, 0.6 so let's make this slightly bigger than that so let's just set this to 0.65 and i'm going to save the scene again and now let's give it a try one more time as you can see uh, we can play all of the three animation if we press three times uh, rapidly but i'm going to test are we going to play two animations if we only press two times oh there you go i've pressed the mouse two times and it works now okay so yeah this is basically how we create an attack combo and you can customize it using your animation and you can also add a bloom effect here and i've already have the bloom effect enabled using the post-processing behavior but i would recommend to use the second version of the post-processing stack here the version 2.30 from the package manager this is basically the older post-processing behavior and I've got this component when I've import the Dream Forest 3 environment on the first episode of this uh, series. So I'm going to use this and I can customize the bloom here if we want to increase it. So I've select the post-processing profile here and here I'm going to set increase the intensity. So I'm going to set the intensity to around let's say 2 or 1.5 this is quite bright and i'm going to set the threshold to around 0.9 so uh, we have a higher threshold 0.8 should be enough and now if we uh, press play you see that we have a nice glowing particle effect so this concludes the attack mechanics and in the next series i'm going to probably create how we can damage an object uh, before we are creating the enemy so we need to create a mechanics where we can damage an object using the sword here and later we can also implement this damage to the enemy when we are start creating the enemy thanks a lot for watching i hope you enjoy this tutorial and if you like this video hit that like button also don't forget to subscribe and press that notification button for more unity tutorials with c sharp playmaker and bolt see you on the next video